Um, in this lesson, we are going to tackle um, the final uh, jigsaw, uh, the block. All right, so now let's have um, let's have a look and see how how it works. Uh, to do that, um, we need to uh, create another define another method. Let's use the right terminology. Define a method called student. Okay, and uh, student simply uh, yields self. Okay, so now yield self is, is, is sounds strange, but um, it just basically remembers the scope is in, it remembers all the methods around it, and things like that. So we'll come across this a few more times, but for now, let's just try and see what happens. So we run this, um, nothing happens because we haven't called students. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, we say student. All right, now let's try and run this and see what, and we have an error. So it says no block given to yield. So now yield always accepts a type of argument called a block. And this is what a block essentially looks like. It looks like this. It's a do and then something that the block yields back. So that's what the S is. The S is an instance that is yielded back to you. So this S remembers, it knows what introduce is, it knows what study is. So we can now say S dot introduce, okay? Because that's what um, self does. So we've yielded self back. So now when we do this, it has my name is Kingsley, I'm 32 years old. So we passed in a block, and a block yields something back to us. That's how it is um, described. And as um, as usual, um, we are going to come across this a few more times. So don't worry if you don't fully get it yet. So again, it knows about study, so it gives us Kingsley studies software testing. So that's slightly what this here is doing. So moderators um, is yielding something back to us from um, active record. So we have the T there, and then we can call um, different methods on T and we can pass in symbols into them. So that is partially how blocks work. So we can see um, here, um, so self again, remembers the scope of things around it, the methods. We are going to come across this a bit more um, soon. Um, so we can also pass in uh, named arguments here into introduce, and it will behave exactly as expected. So we give it a symbol called David, and we run this, and it says, my name is David, I'm 32 years old. So everything works exactly the same. So we have a method that we're giving an argument, but the argument is a block. And it's a block that has multiple lines. But we can also have a block that is um, just one line, so a different type of block. So we say student, and we say curly brackets open and close. And then we say pipe, and S is what's yielded back. So this is another way of writing a block when it's just a one-liner. So just a quick one-liner, so we say call it open and close, and we have the same things inside. So that also runs, and it gives us, uh, my name is Kingsley, I'm 32 years old. So this is a different way of passing a block to a method, okay? Um, so if we uh, come back to, to this one, so this is what we have, we have, um, something there, we have uh, a symbol is passed into student as, as an argument. So we want to be able to pass in two arguments, a symbol and a block. So that's what we have here. So we can come and modify this method definition and we can say you now accept, um, okay, an argument which I call param for parameters. So I'm just going to print this out, interpolate, double quotations. I got it right the first time. Okay, so now we say hello and 
with exclamation mark there. So when we run this, we have hello world. So now we have a method that accepts an argument as well as a block argument. So it now looks exactly like this here. Okay, so we've we've learned quite a few things here. I've learned um, about blocks, two different types of blocks, one for one-liners and so on. We've learned about yield, uh, which returns something back to the block. Um, in this case, we have S when they use it back to us and self remembers um, all the methods around it so we can call it on what was yielded back. So in this, the last you know, three videos. We've learned a few terminologies. Um, we've learned about uh, interpolation, concatenation, we've learned about symbols, we've learned about different types of arguments, named arguments, we've learned about uh, position-based arguments, and we've learned about blocks. And when we put a plus, we're concatenating things. So all these basically are words that you need to write down and understand. Because if you want to learn a different language, you could just ask, how do you concatenate in uh, C sharp? Then you can get a very reasonable feedback. So it's very, very useful. It's not just unique to, to Ruby. Symbols are used in other languages too. All right, so we are back to Ruby, uh, to Rails in the next project, next video. So I'll see you there.